Hi class, this is your instructor Megan, and in this video I want to go over print layout techniques. Uh, this is going to be largely a review from Journalism 103, but I know some of you haven't had that class for quite a while. I know some of you took it as a freshman, you're probably juniors or seniors now. So I want to go over print layout techniques that are applicable to the newsletter project you're about to embark on. And just make sure we are all on the same page, you know, that we all remember what we need to remember from J103. And so in this lesson, I'm going to talk about modular design and alignment, spacing, typography, and then this is really specific, but I want to talk about rule lines and boxes because you'll probably need them for your newsletter design. So let's get started with modular design. Modular design is a way of designing that is used in newspaper design and newsletter design. And in this way of designing, each story is told in a rectangular shape. So each page is broken up into rectangles or modules, and then within each module you have just one story. And each page should have a feature module that's larger and more prominent than the others. It has to be at least two times as large. So you're going to take your newsletter page and you're going to break it up into rectangles. And one of those rectangles is going to be at least two times larger than all of the others and that's going to be where your most important story goes and all of the modules should line up with a grid so i'll talk about grid spacing in this section as well so here's a newsletter design and you'll see that it uses page modules i've highlighted the page modules and you can see at the top we have what's called the flag where we have the name of the newsletter the volume number the date and then we have the feature module which is twice as large as any other module on here it has a big prominent headline a subhead a photo and a story and then to the right we have two smaller modules here what our recent graduates have to say which is just a picture and a quote and then a picture and a uh, caption underneath it is the third module, well actually the fourth module, and then at the bottom we have a little footer module. So we have a module at the bottom that in this case is just a quote to kind of spice up the newsletter and, and give it some visual interest. So these are page modules. Now one thing that I see a lot that you do not want to do is have modules that are not perfectly rectangular. So what I've seen before is like this module here, when the story ends, it'll continue over here, and then this will be a module right here. You don't want to do that. You want every module to be rectangular. It shouldn't be Tetris shaped, you know? It shouldn't be a shape like this, where you've got, you know, this is part of the module and then this is part of the module over here and it sort of looks like a Tetris brick. You want to avoid any modules that are not perfectly rectangular. No Tetris bricks in newspaper design or newsletter design. Now I want to talk about alignment. The modules have to touch their grid lines on their left and right. So we're going to go over grid systems. This is something that you learned in J103, but again, I know it's been a while, so I want to go over it. You have to use the grid. If it's clear to me that you did not use a grid, which if you don't use a grid, I'll know right away you didn't use one. Um, you cannot pass this assignment if you don't have a grid system. Um, all design requires a grid system, so if you're not using one, then you're not doing design. So you can't pass this assignment or any other assignments without having some kind of grid system. Now when we get to the website, the website will make the grid for you, it won't be a big deal. But here you're going to have to decide what kind of grid system you use and you have to stick to it. So what does it mean to stick to the grid system? How do you actually use a grid system? Well, when we're using modular design, all we mean by using the grid system is that the modules have to touch on the left and right. So here we have a four column grid newsletter, which is pretty standard. If you aren't very comfortable with grids when you start your newsletter assignment, you might think about starting with four. Um, we've got four columns and then every module touches on the left and right. So this top module where the flag is, it's pretty much lined up to the left and right of the grid. Now this is a little bit further out because it goes to the page edge. This area right here that my cursor is following down, this is going to be the margin, which you probably remember from J103. So you'll see nothing's in the margin except for the colored background. Uh, but this module pretty much sticks to the column the grid columns by touching on the left and right. This module right here about us is very clearly lined up with the grid. All the type lines up along this grid column here and then on the right 
all of the type and the picture lines up on the grid on the right. So this module is touching the grid system on the left and here on the right. Even this picture, and I apologize, my mouse is like getting stuck. I'm gonna reset it. See if that helps. There we go. Uh, the picture is even lined up on the left and right. And even the subhead is lined up on the left and right of these grids. So even within the module, everything in the module lines up with the grid still. So we have this module right here. The entire module touches on the left and right. And then within it, we have a picture that lines up on the left and right of this column, the second column. Even the headline lines up to the left and right. So everything on your page should be touching a grid line on the left and right. So here, the gray background is touching on the left and right. The green background is touching on the left and right. And then they've split the picture, so they split the gray part to have a picture on the left and a headline on the right. The headline is touching left and right. The picture is pretty much touching left and right. So everything needs to touch the grid system. If you're having trouble with using the grid, just contact me, just reach out. We can have a Google Hangout and I can walk you through it on your own newsletter. I'd be glad to do that. I know working with the grid is one of the hardest things to learn about design. It took me probably a year to figure out what I was really doing with the grid when I first started design, uh, designing when I was in high school. So I know it's difficult, but just remember, everything needs to be touching a grid column on the left and right. You can't, for example, put a picture Let's imagine this shape that I'm about to draw as a picture. You wouldn't want to pick, put a picture like here because it's not touching on the left and right. You would need that to go here and now it's touching on the left and right. Same here. You know, this picture, you wouldn't want this picture to be, this picture of these people, you wouldn't want it to be like here. It has to touch on the left and right. Everything on here has to touch on the left and right. Okay, let's talk about different grid systems. There's no uh, exact science to choosing how many columns you want in your grid system. Um, three is, tip, is often used in newsletter design, but it's actually not the greatest choice because if you look at this example, it's divided into three. Um, look how wide this type is right here. People do not like to read long columns of type it looks like, it makes the type look really boring. It makes the page look like there's way too much to read. So this is not really a great system. It would be better maybe if they broke this into two columns, but you can see how they have three columns and everything sort of lines up. Here, the sidebar, the headline, the little cut dotted line lines up with this line. The picture lines up with this line. Over on this side, all this stuff here lines up on the grid column line, even the picture up here lines up. So you want everything to line up with these grid systems. Here's another four column grid, and you can see how everything lines up. Um, on the center, that sort of splits the page into left and right, and then over here, they've got two columns, and everything sort of lines up there. All this stuff here lines up with each other, and then this yellow square that they have lines up with the fourth column. Here's a design with, what is this, eight? Yeah, eight column grid system, and you can just see again how everything lines up. There's a table of contents on the left, and it takes up two columns, and then over on the right, everything is lined up with the grid system. So there's really nothing here, oops, that's not touching a grid line on the left and right. Here's a five column grid. This is a good system if you have a table of contents because you can see they have four columns over here and one at the beginning and they just use that one at the beginning for the table of contents. It's nice and skinny and doesn't take up a lot of room on the front page so you can have a table of contents without that table of contents having to draw too much attention to itself. And again, you can just look to the right and see how everything lines up on the left and right. Now I've built some exercises into this video lecture, so if you want to follow along with what I'm talking about and try it for yourself, you can. What uh, this exercise is meant to do is for you, or what you're meant to do here is to take your uh, example newsletter that you're making for this lesson. Your your you have a tutorial which is to create, recreate a newsletter front page in InDesign. I've given the design to you, and you have to make it real. Um, 
there's an example that I've put on Blackboard. Print the example and then follow along with these exercises. So in that example, if you are trying to understand grids and modules, try highlighting the perimeter of the modules on the newsletter tutorial and just use a highlighter and sort of get a sense of how all those modules are rectangular. And then you can use a darker marker to draw the grid lines in. Try to get a sense of how many columns that design is. Um, within each module, you have some elements that you need for each one. Um, and there's a certain order for this. This is really important. There's always an order to what's in the module. If you have a photo, the cut line has to go underneath it. Absolutely no question. Occasionally, you can put the, cu the cut line to the left or right, but it's very typical to be underneath. And if you have a large photo, as in this module, the photo should go at the top. So the order, and you can sort of make this your mantra, the order is photo, cut line, headline, subhead, photo, cut line, headline, subhead. That's the order it should always go in, photo, cut line, headline, subhead. Um, you can make a few exceptions every now and then, but typically each module photo cut line headline subhead and if you don't have something then you skip it so if you don't have a photo then you won't have a cut line you'll just have headline subhead and then under under that you have the article so photo cut line headline subhead article you do need to have subheads for your headlines um, because you're not going to have enough room in the headline to really explain what the article is about so you're going to need a subhead so photo cut line headline subhead and then underneath it the article that's the order that you should go in so how do you figure out what your modules are? You have to go through a process. So you have to start your newsletter. You're gonna write a creative brief, with all, which I'll talk about in the next video, and you have to determine what articles are going on this page. So what articles are gonna achieve my communications objectives that I need to put on this page? And then you're gonna figure out the mar module hierarchy, which is a term from your reading uh, last week, hierarchy. Hierarchy determines what's most important. So you can think about organizational hierarchy. The organizational hierarchy of all state has the president as the highest. Um, and, you know, under the president is vice president. And then under that, you know, along with that, you have provost. So hierarchy, same idea. What is the most important? What's the top of importance? So you have to determine the module hierarchy. Which article is most important? You're going to place the less important articles in their modules on the outside of the page, and that's going to leave you a module in the center or the side that's twice as large as the other modules, and this is where your feature is going to go. So I'll show you an example. If I were doing this newsletter, here's what I would do. I would start with the flag module because I'm going to have that for every newsletter, so it should just be there always. So I'll do that first. And then I'll do the bottom because, again, in this particular newsletter design, there would always be a quote at the bottom. You don't have to do that. It's just an example. Um, so then I would do that second, and then I would put this in here third, and then I put this, oops, put this in here fourth, and that would leave me this empty space to the left where I would then put my feature module, and I would put it in this order. Photo, cut line, headline, subhead, article. So let's talk about how some of the design principles apply to newsletter design. You should remember the design principles from J103. Uh, this, these are not all of them. These are just the ones I want to talk about in this particular video. Balance, proportion, contrast, and harmony. So as you design the modules, you want to make sure that you're balancing them, which means you're providing equal visual weight on the left and right side of the modules that you're proportioning the modules, so you have to have one that is twice as big as everything else, and the rest will be different degrees of small. You're gonna contrast the modules, so the largest module should have the largest headline, the smallest module should have the smallest headline, and you're gonna harmonize the modules. So you're going to use the same type and elements over and over again. And I'll talk about typography at the end of this video. So if we look at this example, you can see that we have balance. We have a big module over here on the left that draws a lot of attention, and then we have two modules on the right that draw equal amounts of attention. Um, we have one large module, that's the feature. It's twice as large as the others. Everything else is pretty small compared to it. We have harmony. We're using the same typefaces in this entire newsletter. About Us is the same typeface as here, what our recent graduates have to say, which is the same typeface as Hospitality, Tours, and Business, and it's the same typeface actually as almost everything on this page. We're just using different 
sizes and different weights. And then we have harmony in the color. All of these colors go together. They're all very bright, almost neon colors. So if you're following along with the InDesign tutorial that you've printed out, try to identify how the page incorporates balance. What is the largest module? And then what are the smaller ones that balance it out? How about proportion? What's the largest? And then how much smaller are the small ones? What about contrast? And here you can have contrast of color, or contrast of shape, contrast of size, um, contrast of type. In this example, we have some contrast. For this module, we have gray and green. For this module, we have a really bright picture and then a pink color block. So the green and the pink have contrast of color. We have contrast of size with the headline. This headline is very, very large. This headline is much, much smaller. We even have contrast of caps. This headline is all caps. This one is mixed upper and lower case. So you can have all kinds of contrast. Um, and then harmony of modules. Figure out, you know, are we using similar typefaces? Are we using similar colors? One thing I want to bring up is that text is really boring. No one wants to get a newsletter that just looks like an essay. People don't really read all of the newsletter. They're just going to look at the page and read the big words. So someone's going to look at this and they're going to read Spencer's newsletter about us. Spencer College is a friendly, welcoming state of the art educational facility. Here what our recent graduates have to say. I would like to say this college gives me a better opportunity. Hospitality management. I'm doing a diploma of management. So people don't really read all of it. They just sort of read whatever stands out. So you want to avoid having just a boring brick of text. Uh, you want to break those up with boxes, fact boxes or pictures or pull quotes, which should all be familiar to you from J103. Um, never create a module with body copy, which means the copy the article of the article that goes from page edge to page edge. So if you have a page that's eight and a half by 11, never, ever, ever take type and just make it go all the way across. It'll look like a Word document and no one wants to read that. People will not read. People like to read short text, not long text. So um, instead of doing that, if you have a module that does go across the page, break it into columns. And here's an example. If this designer had to have the type go all the way from the left to the right, it would be so boring looking, nobody would read that newsletter. You can look at it and just ask yourself, would I read that? And you would say no. So if you have to have type that is very long, that goes, you know, you have to have a module that's very wide, break the type up into columns. And you should have learned this in J103, how to do this. If not, you need to go to bsu.edu slash Linda and sign in, find the InDesign, uh, essentials workshop and there's a video on how to break up columns. So never ever ever create a module with body copy that goes all the way from the left side of the page to the right side. If you need a module that large, break the columns up. Let's talk about spacing. Spacing is uh, the amount of white space or negative space, empty space between elements. In this example we have excellent spacing. You want to have at least a pica, which is 12 pixels or points of space between all modules. So here you can see there's a lot of space. We have the big flag at the top and then we have an empty space and then we have a headline, a subhead, and the article. We have empty space along the left, empty space on the bottom, empty space on the right. You absolutely need to have that empty space, and it can be a color, I mean, you could put a gray background on this, but the type cannot go past the margins. It has to have the space. You can see they've got a nice amount of space around this flower picture. Even here in their flag, they have the title, and then some space, and then some space, and then the newsletter for NHS Harrow, and then space. So you need to have good space in between all these elements. Here's an example of awful, awful, awful spacing. If you turn something in like this, you will not pass this assignment. Um, no white space, no passing. In this example, this is not a good design. The typography is bad. There's no feature that stands out. Um, and there's no space. The spacing is really one of the biggest problems with this design. The world of wine is crammed up in the corner. If they just put empty space under it, 
it would look so much better. And then here you have featured wines for July and then the type starts right away. Just giving this more space above and below would make this look a million times better. So you need to put space between your elements. Okay, let's talk about typography. What you wanna do, your strategy here for your newsletter is to choose just two different type styles. So you should have just two maybe three typefaces on your design. You learned in J103 that you should have no more than three typefaces on a single design. And a typeface is a kind of type. So Times New Roman is a typeface. Comic Sans is a typeface. No more than three on any design. And for your newsletter, I suggest two. Um, you can do three though. I mean, I'm not gonna take points off if you do three because it can be done well. Um, but you're gonna choose two types, display type and body copy. Display type, again, you should remember from J103, if you guys are going through this and thinking, I don't remember this stuff, you need to pull your notes out and look at what you learned in J103. Or if you had it on Blackboard, you need to go into there and sort of get a refresher. Uh, but display type and body copy, display type is type that's larger, that's meant to draw attention and have character. So display type is your headlines, the title of your newsletter, um, any really big quotes that you have on the page. Body copy, the goal of body copy is just to be easy to read and this is what your articles are going to be set in. So display type for headlines, subheads, decks, which are little explainers. And in some case you can choose two display types. So let's take a look at an example. This is a very nice newsletter cover design. You'll see there's lots of white space. So they've done an excellent job here. And here they have a display type. So they have your love in action is one typeface. And then they made one of them bold and gray and one thin and blue. But your love in action is one typeface. It's just different weights. One is bold and one is thin. And then underneath it, they have a second kind of display type, a brand new graduate. This is a serif typeface, whereas your love in action is sans serif. His parents abandoned him, the gangs absorbed him, the police arrested him. This is the same typeface as a brand new graduate. It's just not italicized and it's smaller. So you can see that just in this section here, this is all display type and there's two typefaces. A big serif, a sans serif, which they've used in all caps, and then a smaller serif that they've used in upper, mixed, and lowercase. So, you can use, you have lots of tricks up your sleeve. If you want your type to be different, don't use a different typeface. Use a different size or a different color or a different weight or make it all caps. So if you're looking at your page and you're kind of like, wow, the type's not very interesting, go to your display type and try changing some of it. Make some of it all caps. Make some of it a different color. Make some of it bold and see if that helps give the visual interest you're going for. After you've decided on a display type, you want to choose a body copy. This is for the body of the newsletter. This is your article text, your cut lines, small type, small type that people have to read a lot of. That's body copy. And body copy should be between nine and 11 points in size. When you first put your articles in InDesign, InDesign will make it 12 points. I can tell if it's 12 points and you will not pass this assignment because body copy absolutely cannot be 12 points. It needs to be 9 to 11 points. You'll be tested on that, by the way, in your final exam. And what you're doing here is you're paying special attention to legibility. So how easily can people read this typeface? Legibility is how easily the type can be read. And so your body copy, it's not meant to be fancy. It's not meant to have character. It needs to be very easy to read because people are going to be reading a lot of it. Bylines, cut lines, and pull quotes, they can be in a different way of body copy. So let's take a look at the example you're going to be doing for your InDesign homework. This entire page pretty much uses three typefaces. Infinity here and here is one typeface. That's the only place it's used because it's the logo. And then we have two typefaces, a display typeface, which is Futura, and a body copy typeface, which is Myriad Pro. So, oh, this is, this right here is like a repeat. I can't get rid of it, that's not correct. So here we have a headline is in Futura bold all caps. Underneath it, we have Futura light 
mixed upper and lower case. So the headline and subhead are both display copy, and so they're both Futura, but they're different treatments. One is all caps and bold, the other is mixed upper lower case and light. So that creates contrast. We also have a headline over here. It's exactly the same, but smaller. Futura, all caps for the headline, Futura light mixed for the subhead. And then the pull quote is, once again, Futura. So we're using the same display type. Anytime we have big copy that we need to be big and interesting, like a headline or a pull quote, it's Futura. Anytime we have tiny copy that you need to be able to read, it's Myriad. So here in the article, the byline, the name of the person who wrote the article, is in Myriad Pro bold. And then the article is just Myriad Pro regular. So as you make this, uh, as you make this tutorial, keep in mind how often you're changing the type without changing the typeface. There's two typefaces here other than the logo. So you don't need to get crazy with the typefaces. You want to experiment with uppercase and lowercase, bold and light and italic. That's where you bring in the visual interest. Let's look at one more example. Here's a newsletter that has a display type and a body copy, and they've done theirs a little bit differently. Their display type is all used at the top. So here it is newsletter, secondary, number 11. That's all the same font, it's just different treatments. So newsletter is bold and mixed, secondary is all caps and lighter, and then number 11 is all caps and bold. So same display typeface, different treatments. And then they've done things a little bit differently here in the body. They've made the headline and the subhead and the body copy the same, but once again they're bringing in different treatments. Bold, bold, italic, regular. Blue, red, blue, black. So they're bringing variety with the weights and the colors, not the typefaces. So my biggest piece of advice here is don't get crazy with the typefaces. It's not lots of typefaces or really crazy novelty typefaces that makes your page interesting. It's very simple. You stick with one or two typefaces and you just use different weights. Bold, italic, different colors, blue, red, less on different colors. You want the colors not to get out of hand too. And um, different treatments, all caps or mixed upper and lower case. So the last thing I want to talk about is rule lines and boxes because you need to be able to separate your modules somehow. And you can do that with rule lines or boxes. So this goes here, there we go. Rule line options. If you want to put lines on your design, which this example has lines only vertical lines, which is very common for newsletters to not have horizontal lines, just vertical between the elements. Uh, that line could be dotted, straight, or double. Um, you could do it just between horizontal elements or just between vertical elements or both. Uh, the only thing you need to know about lines is this. The thicker they are, the more definition they create. Think about lines, rule lines, as fences. If you hate your neighbors, you are going to build a giant brick wall so you never have to see them. And when people see out your yard, they will immediately tell that you are trying very hard to separate yourself from your neighbor. If you are cool with your neighbors, you love your neighbors, you spend a lot of time together, then you don't even want a fence, right? If your neighbors are, you know, they're kind of cool but you're not best friends, a chain link fence would be fine because you wouldn't mind seeing them. When you're out doing yard work and they're out doing yard work, you wouldn't mind that you can see through the chain link fence because you like your neighbor. So think about rule lines as fences. The more separation you need, the thicker and more opaque the fence would be. Same with rule lines. If you need a lot of separation, you're gonna use a black line. Um, if you need a little bit of separation, use a dotted line. Um, boxes. If you use a box, you don't also need a rule line. What I'll see is people put a box and they'll put like a line above it. No, no, no. That's way too much separation. Going back to the yard example, that would be like building a brick fence between you and your neighbor and then also putting like a cage over top of your house. You don't need that. 
Um, you just need one. So if you have a box, you don't also need a rule line. The boxes must have a one pica inset. You're going to right click on your box and change the inset. Um, see, here's the inset. See how this type is not touching the box? We have that 12 pixels or one pica of space. That is required for all boxes. And let's go back to this example here. You can see that's what they have. They have one pica of space around the edge of the box. And even the picture follows that one pica. They have a pica here. The type is not touching the edge of the box. This is a huge point deduction if you have your type touching the edge of your box. Okay, cut lines. You need to have a cut line. All photos must have a cut line. A uh, cut line you can do in two ways. You could make a box under your photo as in the example we just looked at and as in the example here. Or you can just put the cut line under the photo. The cut line has three parts. Some kind of lead in. So this is a cut line. You can see that this is a is bold and all caps. That draws visual interest to the cut line to help people read it better. And then they have the cut line itself, also known as a caption, and then you have to credit the photo. Um, for this newsletter, uh, you don't know who took the photo, so just put, you know, photo by, and you can put your own name, that's fine, but you need to have those elements. And then for spacing for cut lines, your cut line should not touch your photo. You can see right here, this is a screenshot from InDesign, the cut line does not touch the photo. You need to have space. Type should not touch anything. This type is over the box, but it's not touching the edge of the box. It's not touching the picture. Type needs room to breathe. When you read, you're putting a lot of cognitive effort into understanding what you're reading. You can't also deal with the fact that the type is touching other elements and looking messy. You just need it to be simple and light and airy. That's everything I want to talk about for the print design review. In the next video, I'm going to be more specific about newsletters, talk about newsletter parts, um, this video is about print design. You can apply what you've learned in this video to newsletters or to postcards or to newspaper pages, but the next video is going to be newsletter specific.